Hello and welcome back to our plumbing course. I'm Joe Carswell and this lesson covers the process of cutting, prepping, and sweating copper pipe and fittings. And also we're going to go over this skills exercise, which has a number of different fittings in it. Anything from elbows to 45s to couplers, and we even have a brass valve in here. So let's get started. Welcome to our channel. By now we've loaded almost 100 videos onto YouTube so that anyone can have access to structured trades training resources. We are really trying to grow this channel and the best way for that to happen is for you, the viewer, to subscribe. Also, if you learned something from these videos, don't forget to click like. So thanks for your support. Let's get back into the lesson. First things first, with any plumbing project, we need to measure mark and cut our pipe. I've got a piece of pipe here. I'll cut six inches off of the end of this pipe. And I'm using a Sharpie here to mark it so you can see it for the camera. That's my six inches. Now I need to cut this pipe. So I'll use my tubing cutter and you might remember this tool from our plumbing hand tools. What this tubing cutter does, it takes a hardened wheel and it spins that around the pipe. It also has some rollers down here, a couple or a pair of rollers. These rollers will actually rotate that pipe against that wheel. And then this handle pushes those rollers closer and closer and closer. That's going to force this wheel through the pipe as we spin it around. I'll show you how that works. So we'll find our mark on this pipe. We'll set it in our tubing cutter. And you need to make sure that your wheels or that your pipe is in between these two roller wheels. And then it needs to be up against this, uh, this hardened cutter wheel right at your mark that you want to make. At that point, you're going to turn the handle until it becomes kind of snug, not too tight, or you'll actually bend the pipe out of round. We need to make one score all the way around first. We want a score that goes all the way around and meets itself where it began. So the way I'm going to do that is to tilt it this way and then rock it back this way a couple of times. And that is going to make a score mark right in the middle that goes all the way around. At this point, we want to follow that score mark several times, but we're going to give this wheel a quarter turn every time we turn the pipe. So I'll turn the wheel, spin the tool, tighten the wheel another quarter of a turn, spin the tool, tighten it, spin it, tighten it, spin it, tighten it, spin it. And that's all it takes to cut through this pipe. If you look at this pipe, it has made a nice square cut on it, but I've got a problem on the inside edge of this pipe. It has a very sharp edge and it actually has some burrs on it. At this point, we need to clean up those burrs. If you don't clean out the inside edge of your copper pipe, two things can happen. That pipe will get noisy when the water flows through it under pressure. And also over time, that uh, harsh or sharp edge will cause the water to swirl in the pipe and it will actually deteriorate or erode away the pipe. Pipes that are not uh, deburred on the inside can develop pinholes over time. Copper will last a very long time, and this is one of those steps that keeps it lasting even longer. We'll use a deburring tool to clean out the inside of that pipe. You might also remember this one from our hand tools. It has this spinning edge on it. So we'll put that in the pipe, and then we're going to turn it or spin it in the pipe a few times, four or five times. And when you're done, it actually carves out all of that harsh, sharp edge in that pipe. If you do it with enough pressure, all of it will stay in one strand and you don't have a bunch of chips to clean out of the pipe. So we're done with this process. This end is now, uh, the edges are now prepped for our sweat process, but there's one other thing we need to do to the end of this pipe and that's polish it. I'll use another hand tool for that. This is my brush tool here. This will polish the ends. And I have my half inch here and a three quarter. This is for the outside of this pipe. And then we have these other ends for the fitting. So this slides on this pipe and then it spins around the pipe a few times. And there's little wire bristles in there, just a, basically a wire brush in there. And when you're done, it has 
created a polished surface on the end of this pipe. We're almost done, but not quite. We polish all of the ends of our pipes, but we also need to polish the inside of our fittings. This fitting, uh, if you look at it, looks fairly shiny and new. That does not mean it does not need to be polished. We'll go ahead and use this end. This is our half inch end of our brush. And we'll put it in each end of this fitting and give it a twist, several twists. And we'll do it on the other end as well. And this polishes the inside. When we're doing our copper, you cannot be too clean or methodical. If, if any step of this process gets left out, we could have a situation where we go to sweat it and it won't seal the pipe and all of that work is for nothing. So at this point, I have my, the, my pipe end polished and I have my fittings polished so we can get to sweating this all together. Okay, so I've got a setup here that's going to help us get through this. This is my third hand. It's holding my pipe that I can add my other pipes to and we'll sweat this all together. I have a felt mat here that's going to catch my uh, solder if I drip any. A lot of times we're using this mat it, um, in the framing so that the torch, if we're uh, using a torch close to our framing, this becomes our sort of our fireproof uh, barrier between the torch and the framing. So we have our pipe coming out. I've already prepped this end of the pipe. Now I need to add this pipe onto here and then this pipe onto here. This is a good time to talk about once you've prepped everything and polished them, it's a really good idea to keep your fingers off of these ends that have been polished. Uh, once again, it's about cleanliness and prep and the oil from your hands can interfere with this sweating process. I can't stress enough uh, how touchy some of this sweating process can be. So at this point, we need to add flux to these parts. And so I'll bring my flux in. It is an acid paste. And at this point, you don't want to be touching this paste. I'm going to put gloves on. Uh, this stuff will actually burn your skin and I will have some safety glasses on as well. So let's go ahead and get ready for this to happen. Uh, this flux is no joke. And especially once you heat it, it's going to, it'll become hot. It can spit. If it's in your eye, that's acid or hot acid in your eye. So hopefully you get the point about that. My one other material that we need to sweat with will be my solder. And solder is very flexible. It's a sort of in wire form. And I will use this to fill in the gaps between the pipe and the fittings. First things first, I have a small brush that I will use to literally paint this flux onto my fittings and my pipe. I don't need a whole lot of flux. I just need a small or a thin layer, but a consistent thin layer on all of the parts. If you have too much flux, uh, it will drag the solder around. This is a good time to talk about what solder is and what it does. So I mentioned that it's an acid paste, but what it does is it's cleaning the pipe right now. This is our last phase of cleaning. So we've been through a couple uh, steps of cleaning. This is the last phase. I'm now painting the inside of my fittings as well. And this will not only clean, but when we heat, the, the copper, the solder will melt in and this helps the solder flow. Without this uh, paste on here, the solder will not flow into our joint. So everything is painted and prepped. Now we can assemble these parts. Fitting goes on first. And then this fitting will go on here. You typically solder both of these fitting connections at the same time. What you don't want to do is to solder one, let it cool, come back and try to solder the other one. Then you're melting the solder that you heated in the first place. So do both of them at the same time and it will all work fairly easily. I'll show you how. We turn this around for a better shot for the camera. It also gives me better access, which reminds me to let you know that you need good access all the way around these fittings while you're uh, sweating them. You don't have a lot of time, and if you're restricted, it can be a problem. So let's go ahead and heat this guy and get it done. So I mentioned not being too close or too far. Uh, you don't want that flame right up against the pipe or the fittings. You're looking for some uh, steam, some bubbling of the flux, 
And at the point that I think it's starting to heat up to the right temperature, I'm going to touch it with my uh, solder. I'm looking for a little silver to come off on my fitting. And at the moment that I see that, I know that we're at the right temperature. After we get to that temperature, we just want to maintain that temperature. And we're going to work this solder into the joints. So it's not quite hot enough. I'm being very careful for the camera here. I want to get this right. So it's heating up a little slower. There we go. So I don't know if you can see that, but we've got a little silver and it's starting to flow into the joint. So that one is done. All that solder is wicking into that joint now. So all we have to do is to maintain this temperature just long enough for this solder to flow in. So at that point, I'm gonna call that fitting done. Not the prettiest joint I've ever done, but there are some uh, drips. There's a little bit of solder. I didn't spill any solder down here though, so I didn't waste any material. That's a watertight, sweaty connection. A, a professional plumber can do this flawlessly over and over and over again, all day, every day. Uh, I am not a professional plumber, but this is the process. If you happen to see the pipe starting to get black or the fittings starting to get black or even blued or discolored, that's too much heat. And what you can do is boil that flux out of the joints and then your solder won't flow into those joints. I don't know if you noticed, but that solder wicked right in. If you look all the way around this joint, you will see it's solid with no gaps in there. It has filled in all of the space between my pipe and my fitting on both sides. That's what we call a good saw, uh, or a good sweated joint. So that's it. That's your basic process of sweating a pipe. Everything from cutting the pipe to dressing the end to polishing the fitting in the pipe. Uh, fluxing them, assembling them, and then heating them, and then the solder wicks in, then you're done. A lot of steps, and don't if you leave out or short yourself on any of those steps, this won't go well. And also you have just a short period of time there to get it done. So that's why this becomes one of the most skilled processes that a plumber can do. Be sure to check out the next exercise we do. We'll take this process and we'll apply it to a skills exercise and assemble a simple plumbing circuit.